Hey everyone, this is Paul Gale from paulgalenetwork.com and thank you for joining me today for a combination video game news, video game talk segment. It is June 2nd, 2021 and the reason why I said it's kind of a combination video is because Nintendo just dropped breaking news regarding their E3 plans. So that is the news portion. There's one other small thing that I'm going to get to, but really today's video is going to be a video game talk segment where I deep dive into this tweet of theirs. They said the following, Nintendo at E3 2021, June 15th, 9 a.m. Pacific time. Tune in for a Nintendo Direct with roughly 40 minutes of info focused exclusively on Nintendo Switch software, mostly releasing in 2021, followed by around three hours of gameplay in Nintendo Treehouse Live. This is their E3 2021 plan. And look at that beautiful graphic. I know it's simple. It's just black, red, and white. But we know what that means. We know that we're going to be treated to four hours of Nintendo goodness. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. This is our Nintendo birthday, our Nintendo Christmas, our Nintendo Super Holiday. We know we get a few of them throughout the year, whether they are Nintendo Directs, Direct Minis, third-party partner showcases, sudden drops on Twitter and other social media platforms, but there's nothing quite like the hype behind the E3 Nintendo Direct. Now, before I deep dive too much further, I wanted to show you one other thing Nintendo related, so it's kind of still a news day, right? The Uji Ogura plant right here is Nintendo's. It's been around for a while, and they are restructuring it, so hopefully in 2024, they will have it open as a Nintendo gallery highlighting many years worth of Nintendo products, their philosophy, games, consoles, manufacturing, behind the scenes content. A Nintendo Gallery Museum sounds fantastic. Hopefully by March 2024. You know, depending on when I go to Japan personally for Super Nintendo World, um, this will definitely be something that I check out. Now this plant opened up in 1969 and was originally designed to manufacture playing cards and Hanafuda cards and also served as a customer service center for product repairs for Nintendo. I think that it's going to be awesome to have a Nintendo museum and whether it's something that you can go to or just see from pictures and videos online, I think it's going to be pretty exciting. But okay, let's get back into the meat and potatoes here. Let's talk about E3, all right? Now, I've been going to E3 since 2000. So from 2000 to 2019, I've attended 20 shows. You know, my first show, I was 16 when I went in, and I have been going ever since. I love the event. This event is my most anticipated event to attend every single year. E3 is so much to me. And even though I love the whole video game industry, there's nothing quite like Nintendo, you know? That represents my childhood. That's the company that I have befriended the most people at, the company that has the most IP that I love, and the most consistent, in my opinion, evolution, pioneering in video game development, console design, technology overall. And yeah, I just love Nintendo and I love E3. So let's break this down, okay? First of all, June 15th, E3 is four days. That means that Nintendo is going up on the final day. That's also pretty interesting, right? Not the 12th, not the 13th, not the 14th, but the 15th. You have to imagine that third parties that are going to go up ahead of Nintendo that are working on games for Nintendo are going to show some of their games throughout E3, right? You also got to figure that, you know, with E3 announcing their awards show on the 15th, it has to take place after Nintendo's E3 Direct because surely some of what Nintendo is going to show during their presentation is going to be eligible for, you know, game of the show 
action game of the show, adventure game of the show, stuff like that, best presentation, you know, it's going to have to be up there. Nintendo is, after all, one of the top sponsors. Not like, you know, you're going to buy your way into winning an award, but Nintendo's at E3, the award show has to take place after. A 40-minute direct is also a pretty sweet spot. The longer these are for me, the better, because even though we get them a few times a year, we don't necessarily get full-on direct presentations of full, a full uh, full direct presentations a few times a year, you know? After all, in 2000, between 19 and 2001, we had to wait quite a while for a full Nintendo Direct. So for me, this is, you know, a movie. This is a, a blockbuster movie that I've been looking forward to, a pay-per-view, a fight, but it's a Nintendo-focused presentation. So give me those minutes. I want every second of them, you know? Now, hype should be contained. I'm not thinking, I'm not anticipating that every single title shown off in these 40 minutes is going to be just blockbuster after blockbuster. But you know what? Any new footage, any new announcement is going to be welcomed by me. I grew up in the time of late 80s, early 90s and getting video game magazines in the mail or going to the newsstand and getting a video game magazine. So you had to wait once a month for news, you know, pre-internet days. Sometimes you got a Nintendo VHS tape in the mail that was like this awesome nine minute, you know, footage of Star Fox 64 and had a couple of seconds worth of footage from upcoming other Nintendo 64 games in that case. So Anything new, for me, means a lot. But this also makes us ask a couple of questions like, will Nintendo show off the Nintendo Switch Plus before E3? Could it possibly be tonight or tomorrow, like rumors are suggesting? Could Nintendo have some type of dual release where they give Summer Games Fest the Nintendo Switch Plus reveal and they give E3 all the software. It also makes you wonder regarding The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 2. You know, it hasn't been confirmed for E3, but gosh, does it make sense, right? It was shown off two years ago at E3 2019 in that little 30-second trailer of Link and Zelda and, you know, Ganondorf of some sort. So I think the time is now. But if they show off Breath of the Wild 2, I would think that they would want to show it off on the best running hardware, which would be the Nintendo Switch Plus. Which makes me think, if Nintendo shows off the Nintendo Switch Plus before E3, let's say today or tomorrow, would they use footage of an older game like Breath of the Wild and how now it runs better on this new system? Or would they want to show it with like, here's footage of Breath of the Wild's successor running on Nintendo Switch Plus and how beautiful it looks and how it's got 4K textures and play on handheld. Look how clear the sequel looks like, the official name drop on an OLED screen and such. Would it be more impactful to give a little tease of Breath of the Wild 2 tonight on the Nintendo Switch Plus in its grand reveal? And then say, stay tuned for E3 for the full trailer and gameplay footage and so forth as part of the Nintendo Treehouse Live. I don't know. Time is ticking, you know. We've got 10 days till E3. And third party developers you know, if Nintendo has it as part of the contract between themselves and third parties that you have to have gameplay footage or pre-rendered footage shown, but it has to be off of Nintendo Switch. It can't just be hypothetical footage running on a PC of what you expect a game to look like eventually running on Nintendo hardware. No, it has to be on Nintendo Switch hardware, you know, or Nintendo hardware in general. So if third parties have any new games that they want to show at E3, 
in the days leading up to the 15th, on the 12th, the 13th, or the 14th. Will they show it on base Nintendo Switch? Or will they want to show the best looking version, the most capable, higher resolution, higher frame rate, greater fidelity version on Nintendo Switch Plus? I would think the latter, right? Then again, could all the rumors, all the reports, my own email contact that sent me information saying that we should expect Nintendo to release a two minute or so Nintendo Switch Plus or Pro or whatever drop between last night and this Thursday evening. Is none of that from any outlet accurate and instead we're actually going to you know wait until like July or August to get a Nintendo Switch Plus? Because at that point you also got to realize Nintendo doesn't want to cannibalize its own sales. If they announce a new refreshed model too soon, people could say, ah, I could hold off on two or three months from now from buying the existing model. I'll just wait. And then you could see Nintendo Switch sales go down for a couple of months. And you don't want that to happen. Or you combat that by saying, yeah, the new system comes out in two, three months, which would be right September in the case of three months from June. But Nintendo Switch has now price dropped. Okay, so then at least people are in the know. Like, mm, I could wait three months, or you know what? I'm just happy with the Nintendo Switch. They dropped it to 250. The new one's gonna be 350. I'm not looking forward to spending 50 dollars more than what I was just about to spend now, anyways, being 300. But to pay 250, ah, cool, good enough for me. There will be people out there like that. Then again, they could announce it and say it's coming out for 400 and not drop the price of the current Nintendo Switch and people then still have a similar mentality of ah I'm not going to spend 400 bucks and wait three months 300 is cool enough for me for now right it's also a possibility the mind works uh, various ways because there are so many different types of gamers out there longtime veterans people with a budget um, first time people new families buying a game console for the first time or revisiting whatever right I'm just trying to figure out Nintendo's plan uh, it's it's impossible to nail down completely but what could we assume from at least this 40 minute footage footage shown focused exclusively on Nintendo Switch software. It's almost like their way of telling us, hey, we know that there are rumors around of a pro model, of a new model. Don't expect that. Could that be a sign that it's just not going to happen at all from now? Whoop, June 2nd to June 15th, nothing. Just software, folks. Don't know where you heard these rumors from, but they're bogus or it's happening, but we're not announcing anything for a while from now. That could be it, you know. Um, but software, mostly releasing in 2021, which means that we will get at least a game, maybe a couple of games that are in the 2022 pipeline. Um, Splatoon 3, you could assume is a safe bet for that uh, we all already saw the game so it wouldn't be a giant shocking reveal but Splatoon 3 would still be cool to see this could potentially mean that uh, Metro Prime 4 gets shown it could mean Breath of the Wild 2 gets shown that would be kind of sad if Breath of the Wild 2 got pushed to 2022 because that is my most anticipated game of this year I'm hoping it's a this year release but we'll see um, Hopefully, this 40-minute presentation has a nice reveal trailer of Breath of the Wild 2. Whether or not it was already shown off a week, few days, week and a half prior, which would be now, of Breath of the Wild 2 on Nintendo Switch Plus, and then the main video itself being in this direct. But hopefully we get to see that and locked in as a 21 title. Hopefully we see Bayonetta 3. I would love to see Bayonetta 3 after all this time it was announced at the Game Awards. It's been a few years. 
and I'm so ready for that one. Metroid Prime 4, of course, I expect that to be 2022. But if there's one 2022 game, let it be that one that gets shown, please. The new Donkey Kong game that's been rumored to be in development by Nintendo EPD. Signs are pointing that it's more likely to be a 2D, you know, uh, 2D platformer, but if it could be a 3D open world cruising through the jungle, swinging from vine to vine in every direction, dense foliage, I would love that. But Donkey Kong, in any capacity, will be cool to see. The rumored Kirby game, which we know isn't actually a rumor, Nintendo has confirmed. Various folks have said they are working on trying to make the best Kirby game ever. So a new Kirby title, also 2D or 3D. The rumored Metroid 2D title. This has been floating around for a while. Could we see a 2D Metroid? Could we see Metroid Prime Trilogy? To be safe, I would say that a 2D Metroid is more likely than a Metroid Prime Trilogy, especially if Metroid Prime 4 isn't ready until, you know, let's say November 2022. I could see it from a strategy standpoint, releasing Metroid Prime Trilogy several months before to kind of get people reacquainted with the series on Nintendo's newest hardware that might have skipped out on the first three titles, you know, make for the biggest splash. But in the meantime, please Metroid fans and hopefully release an amazing 2D game this year. Would it be a brand new 2D game or would it be a remake of Super Metroid? Would it be a sequel to a designated game like Fusion or something entirely different? We'll see. Splatoon 3, like I said, possible to be shown. Mario Kart 9. The rumor around Mario Kart 9, it's intriguing. You know, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is going on to becoming one of Nintendo's best-selling games ever, and it's, and it's an upgraded version of Mario Kart 8, which released on Wii U. So the game's actually pretty old. Still really fun. Still really holds up well, visually speaking. I mean, even the Wii U version, when I fire that up once in a while, I'm like... Man, this is still a current-gen looking game. It's still really nice. Of course, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe on Nintendo Switch looks and runs better, but it's still selling really well. Every month, all worldwide, every quarter, it's a top-selling game on any platform. So from one point of view, Nintendo doesn't need to release a Mario Kart 9 in terms of you know, sales. Could we get some kind of major Mario Kart 8 Deluxe DLC pack where a new cartridge, a new download gets released and it's Mario Kart 8 Deluxe but with 16 new courses, 8 new racers, 4 new battle maps and an enhanced for free for Nintendo Switch Plus mode where it's got retooled visuals. Mm. That could be interesting. That could be like a Game of the Year edition type skew. So it technically still goes into Mario Kart 8's Deluxe's sales. But would just, um, you know, be a bigger, more meaty package. And if you have 8 Deluxe on Nintendo Switch, you could download this, you know, DLC package for you know, $20 or whatever. And if you buy the Nintendo Switch Plus, you could benefit, you know, from all of the upgrades, just like somebody buying the cartridge for the first time, the new cartridge that I'm proposing. I can see that as a possibility, especially if it's an improvement in the visuals and stuff like that, then it really feels more than just, ah, new courses, which would still be cool. Maybe some new gameplay mechanics thrown in. But Mario Kart 9, that's one that I think a lot of people want. Personally, I would be okay if there isn't a Mario Kart 9, but Nintendo does introduce something like a Diddy Kong Racing title. You know, taking a different approach from some different characters, primarily from the Donkey Kong universe, but it could include some folks from The Legend of Zelda, Metroid, Star Fox series. 
maybe even Mario joins in. But obviously the theme is Donkey Kong centric courses and adventure mode surrounding a volcano coming back. Voice acting, you know, a story behind it. Uh, maybe the main gameplay isn't focused on carts, but it is aerial. It could be in small planes, but carts are also a thing. Maybe underwater is a thing, but not underwater where you are wheels on the floor, but actually moving around in water, kind of like you are moving around in a plane. Or possibly just hovering above the water. But that would be kind of cool. That would be a different way how to do a kart racer. Because immediately you want to think, well, isn't the logical next step to just do Nintendo Kart? But if you do a Nintendo Kart, can you ever go back to Mario Kart? You know, if you ever just full-on go Nintendo Kart, that's our next game. Um, and you've got Link, Samus, Fox McCloud, Captain Falcon, Mario, Princess Peach, and the Splatoon characters, and Olimar from Pikmin, and Fire Emblem characters, and Kirby, Donkey Kong. And you're going into all of these different worlds, and you've got a, you're getting uh, courses from Legend of Zelda, and from Metroid, and like I said, Donkey Kong, and Fire Emblem, and Splatoon, and Mario ones, and Kirby ones. At that point, how do you go back to just a designated Mario Kart game? I guess you still could, but to me those seem like two competing things. Like Nintendo Kart is too big. Like think about it like this. If they just made a Mario fighting game now, and it played similarly to Super Smash Bros., would you be interested in it as much as the next Smash Brothers? Now maybe if they went a completely different direction with a designated Mario fighting game, whether it was, you know, a 3D brawler or a 2D, you know, 2D HD 16-bit sprite overload hand-drawn animated Mario fighting game, it could be different enough, you know. A Mario and Co. pro wrestling game, that could be different enough. A Bandai Namco co-developed Legend of Zelda fighting title where its gameplay is similar to Soul Calibur. That could work. And that is something that I thought would have happened long time ago, especially after the success of Soul Calibur 2 on GameCube. Obviously, we see a good relationship between Bandai Namco and Nintendo with a Pokémon tournament, right, for Wii U and Nintendo Switch. And so you could say that, well, Pokemon exists as a fighting game. They've got their main games, their RPGs, and Pokemon inclusion in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. So maybe uh, a Mario fighting game could work. Maybe a Nintendo Kart could work if it's different enough. If it's Nintendo Racing and not Nintendo Kart, a different type of racing experience. Or you just go with another franchise like Diddy Kong Racing, and you have aerial racing and underwater racing. A little bit different. Of course, moving on from Mario Kart, going into another racing franchise, F-Zero. I would love to see a new F-Zero game, but I think that in 2021, you need to really push any idea and make it bigger and better. And how I'd love to see F-Zero handled is you know, on the ground, Captain Falcon focused story mode where you play as him. If you watch the old cartoon from back in the day, if you played some of GX, you kind of know what I'm talking about. Captain Falcon is a cool character. And in a Ninja Gaiden esque type gameplay mode, you're fast, you're fluid, you've got cool skills, you beat up bad guys. You go through futuristic settings as a bounty hunter, making your way from race to race. You've got combat and this big story that you just blow open the F-Zero universe and you pull in characters from the franchise past. You bring in new characters and you put Captain Falcon in the middle of it all. And it's his quest to save this portion of the galaxy. And he has to... Do so one race at a time, you know. 
he has this dual role in life as a bounty hunter and as a professional racer. And you make the game have these big action-packed sequences and racing segments. And maybe for online, you could just play in the focus racing like everybody wants. But perhaps Nintendo doesn't think that they could just handle or just have a successful F-Zero game these days. Just an F-Zero racing title. Maybe it's too tough. Maybe it's too niche. Mm, hard to say. But I think exploring the universe and having a game where it's, you know, third-person action-packed playing as Captain Falcon and racing in one, that could definitely work. Cool cinema scenes to progress the story. That would be fun. Another possibility for F-Zero IC is an F-Zero 99 style game. Visuals comparable to F-Zero GX but vamped up, which that game still looks good today. But nothing too dynamic, nothing too striking in the graphics department because I would propose F-Zero 99. 99 racers on the track at once. Long tracks, different tracks. You and 98 other players playing on screen at once. This could be Nintendo's next 99 game. You know, yeah, Tetris 99, Super Mario 35, and Pac-Man 99. So what about F-Zero 99? It wouldn't be the grand F-Zero racing experience that people wanted, like a new natural progression in the F-Zero franchise, going from Super Nintendo to Nintendo 64 and Game Boy Advance titles and Nintendo GameCube. But it would be cool as long as they nailed the gameplay, they made it fast, they made it focused. You run into a little bit of an issue when it comes to, you know, vertical play. So maybe you would play a horizontal game of F-099 and you have the other 98 characters on the top and bottom. That could possibly work. Because you'd want to see a good amount of track in both wide screen mode and eh, having, you know, a good amount of top. Would you go 21 by 9 in that case? Would that be too short? Or would you stick it to 16 by 9 and just make it a little bit more limited of a screen because you have the other players around you? You know, there are different ways that they could make it work. Of course, I have my own idea. Nintendo Extreme Sports Racing, which if you saw one of my videos on it the other day, I discussed the possibility of Nintendo exploring an all-in-one mountain concept. And you're welcome to check out the video. I had a lot of fun talking about it. And that's bringing Wave Race, 1080, Snowboarding, and Excite Bike into one game. I'll briefly talk about that if you want to check out the video. Like I said, I deep dive quite a bit into it. And just imagine dropping out of a helicopter with your snowboard intact down to the mountain cruising down the snow in your snowboard unlocking different paths along the way grinding this tree hopping through this hillside launch down off the bottom of the hill off a platform bam right onto your jet ski cruising around the ocean around the side of the mountain that you were just on on your jet ski seeing different people still on the mountain possibly if they're getting close working your way around working your way around the bend Bam! Hop off automatically. Go off a ramp onto your motocross bike. Now you're enjoying the next portion, the Excite Bike portion. Traveling through the mud on the opposite side of the mountain. Working your way through different portions until you get to the finish line. Have that type of experience. Be able to play just snowboarding levels in a row. Just Excite Bike levels in a row. Just Wave Race segments in a row. Or have this all-in-one, you know nine lap kind of thing where it's not nine laps in the conventional sense but checkpoints mix it up where sometimes you're racing from an island to another island on jet ski you land hop off automatically onto your motocross work your way up the mountain and then snowboard down on the opposite side you know you could play it different ways of how you want this to go and in what order right but it seems really cool. You could even go you know, motocross all the way across the island to the water portion. Work your way up a roaring rapid. Very different type of water mechanics there. Until you get high enough 
to the other side of the mountain where it's a fast snowboarding segment. You know, there's, like I said, different ways you could do that. But Nintendo, Extreme Sports Racing, if there was ever a title that wouldn't compete with Mario Kart, would be for a different demographic as there are not any really extreme sports titles out there on the market today. There are some other franchises that still exist that have some extreme sports racing. You know, you still get a couple of snowboarding titles here and there. Of course, you have skateboarding that's still, you know, pretty relevant. But something like this, oh, this would be fantastic. You could even add in pilot wings. Then it becomes a little bit more ambitious because at least with the other three, they're still mostly the same type of racing experience from front to back and left to right and you're just going up and down waves or up and down hills or ramps mud snow really it's the water with the physics that you need to get behind you throw in pilot wings though and now you have to deal with aerial and you have to do with multiple axes and depending on what portions of pilot wings you want you know you hang gliding you jetpacking um what are you doing gyrocopter uh, but that's a surprise title that you know, doesn't exist just in my mind. But in talking with others, sharing my idea, a lot of people love it. So I would like to see that. I'd be very happy if we got something like that at E3. ARMS. Could we see a revisit of ARMS? A sequel? What about Punch-Out? See, Nintendo has a lot of franchises. I thought that Punch-Out on Wii was terrific. I think that's an easy inclusion to just revamp, stick it in HD, 1080p, keep it 60 frames per second, you know, maybe even in 4K and Nintendo Switch Plus perhaps, 16 by 9. That's a fun title. Or a new Punch-Out would be cool too. The announcement of... Hmm... Nintendo 64 games coming to either eShop or as part of the Nintendo Switch Online service. That would be great. You know, June is the 25th anniversary month of when Nintendo 64 launched in Japan. September is the 25th anniversary month of Nintendo 64 in North America. I have fond memories of the N64. Just loved it. Probably still my favorite console ever. Uh, other systems had a greater variety of games over the years. I think Nintendo Switch is really shaping up to potentially being my new favorite system ever. But Nintendo 64 was just a magical launch. So including those games on Nintendo Switch Online would be cool. I know people would like Game Boy Advance, myself included. So we'll see. There's possible room for that. A new Fire Emblem. You know, Three Houses did very well, so could we see Fire Emblem on Nintendo Switch, whether it's a brand new title or a remake of a classic one? Uh, possibly. That would be really cool. Huh. Third parties. Third party talk. If someone was going to do a third party game, I think right now my most wanted would be let Ubisoft handle a Star Fox. You know, Starlink on Nintendo Switch in particular was really cool. The voice acting, the story elements, the CGI short scenes of Fox & Co. was beautiful. And I was like, that team could handle a designated Star Fox game. Of course, would I mind seeing Star Fox Zero reworked a bit and brought over to Nintendo Switch? Not at all. I think that would be cool. I'd be down for that. But the thing with Star Fox, Star Fox 64, Star Fox Zero, you know, they're all kind of reimaginings, remakes of themselves. I want to see a sequel. I want to see the Star Fox series continue to go forward. Unless if you do a prequel with James McCloud, that would be okay. But I really want to see the series go forward. So if Ubisoft made a Star Fox game, and it played like Star Fox, not like Starlink. No disrespect to Starlink, but Starlink played differently than Star Fox. So you make it play like traditional Star Fox, you handle the cinema scenes, and you make it big. Maybe you have online gameplay versus mode. Maybe you have 
this is something that I've wished for a long time, online co-op, not just versus mode, but online co-op where you and three others could go through the whole game's story mode at the same time. Fox McCloud, Peppy Hare, Slippy Toad, Falco Lombardi. Maybe you could achieve this in four-player co-op or four-player four local, but four-player online going through the adventure mode together, that'd be epic. Whether it's the on-rail segments or the all-range mode, mode segments, that'd be terrific. So that's something that I would love to see. Star Fox is one of my favorite franchises. It's just kind of a, a hit or miss sometimes. None of the Star Fox games are bad, but not all of them are great like they should be because I think it's a great series with terrific potential. You know, you can make Fox an awesome character and have on foot gameplay segments. Both Fox and Falco Lombardi, or I should say Fox and Captain Falcon, could kind of play similarly in this on foot action-packed scenario of being the hero. They did put Fox on land a couple of times in the past, you know, with Adventures and Assault, both on Nintendo GameCube. But I'm thinking a little bit something different for how I would see Fox play. You know, we know now that we're not going to get, you know, Star Fox Metroid Fusion Saga. That was proved to be just a title that was a pitched or proposal proposed title of sorts to Retro Studios way back, almost a decade ago. But a new Star Fox game that has some of those elements, like the cross between on foot and in air and online, just, just give me some Star Fox. So we're covering quite a bit. New Zelda content for the 35th anniversary. You know, rumors are coming in left and right regarding The Legend of Zelda crossing over with Monster Hunter. Monster Hunter getting Legend of Zelda gear, costumes, even enemies. That's cool stuff. What about The Legend of Zelda crossing over with Final Fantasy VII Remake? So first of all, you'd have to have an announcement of Final Fantasy VII Remake coming to Nintendo Switch exclusively in cartridge and digital form on the Nintendo Switch Plus, but coming to all Nintendo Switch owners via cloud gaming. Or maybe they find a way how to make it work on the regular Nintendo Switch 2 in cartridge form or digital download. And as part of the 35th crossover celebration, Cloud Strife in the Nintendo Switch version of FF7 Remake gets to wear Link's traditional green tunic. Wow! Aerith with Zelda outfit. Sephiroth with a Ganondorf outfit. Holy cow, does that sound cool. That sounds amazing. See, back in 1997, 1998, it was Cloud Strife versus Link from Ocarina of Time. It was Final Fantasy VII versus The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. You could be someone that on the playground played both, loved both, or you could be someone that really favored one or the other and you put your foot on the ground. Both characters are cool. Both characters are iconic. Link from you know, dozens of series over many more years. Cloud from really leaving an impact in 1997 and in a couple of other projects since. Obviously, we see Cloud on Super Smash Brothers. We had an awesome trailer reveal for Sephiroth, and he's in Smash Brothers as well. So I don't think it's that unheard of. That would be one of the coolest ways how to celebrate the 35th anniversary of Legend of Zelda outside of designated Zelda games is to have, okay, some inclusion in Final Fantasy VII Remake on Nintendo Switch, and of course uh, in Monster Hunter Rise, which the latter is looking pretty likely at this point. Speaking of Zelda 35th, what about all these Zelda games? Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. You know, we have some pretty significantly upgraded versions of those games that released on the 3DS. Could they just bring those 3DS versions and turn them into HD? Slap it in 16 by 9, 1080p, 60 frames per second. Can you achieve that? Or even a solid 30? 
upgrade some textures and stuff. Hmm. Give us a nice 3D operating camera. Upgrade the cinema scenes too in both titles. Possible. Maybe switch between classic mode or new mode. So veterans of the series that want to play a more difficult uh, water temple and torture themselves, they could. Or people that want to play Majora's Mask with a little bit easier of a time tracking things and storing things, they could. You can you could switch between the two in either game. Would they be $60 individual releases, though? Or a bundled title? Hmm. That's a good question. Of course, my hope, and I did another video on this, so if you want to check that out, you can, is Nintendo doesn't give us Ocarina of Time this year. They announced this year that coming in 2023, in two more years, they're taking a little break from a new Zelda game after Breath of the Wild's sequel, and the next main Zelda title is going to be the 25th anniversary celebration full-on remake of The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time done Resident Evil 2 or Final Fantasy 7 remake style, you know, built from the ground up, boom, voice acting, FMVs, high quality visuals, new functionality, new story elements, a background on Ganondorf and seeing who he was and how he came to Hyrule Castle, a time in between the seven years where Link had to wait and the rest of the world didn't have a champion, of getting to play as Sheik. I keep going back to these action-type roles of Fox, Captain Falcon, and now Sheik. Sheik putting treasure beneath the ground so that when Link wakes up, he could access it and be more powerful. That's a little story element that I just threw in there that would be fun. Uh, just a brand new, big-time take on one of Nintendo's most important games ever. That's what I would love to see at E3. An announcement of it. A teaser trailer, maybe, but just an announcement of that thing coming next. So if you're someone that's tired of remakes, don't worry, you've got Breath of the Wild too. If you're someone that is like, I want a remake, well, you're going to get that remake, and it's going to happen in a couple of years. Skyward Sword HD... I'm sure that will be shown off in some capacity. The game's coming out in July, after all. Then you've got finished games like Twilight Princess HD and Wind Waker HD. Would they be spruced up just a little bit more, even, for Nintendo Switch? Or just copy and paste them over and make sure the buttons are, you know, color-coordinated and Joy-Cons and have all of the, you know, proper footprints on screen of, you know, click in this, rotate this, slide the Joy-Con in, and so forth. You know, standard stuff. Any classic Zelda games? Could they release a bundle? Could they throw in, you know, Zelda 1, 2, Link's Awakening? What if? Because we already got Link's Awakening. Um, so Link to the Past is what I meant. You know, Zelda 1, Zelda 2, Link to the Past. Any of them get a remake treatment or just, uh, you know, here are a few titles that you could now download or buy. How about the 3DS titles? Link Between Worlds. What about the DS titles? Phantom Hourglass, Spirit Tracks. Can we see them? Minish Cap, Oracle of Ages, Seasons. We're going to see those again. You know, so many games, many of which are lost in time, lost on an old Nintendo device that a lot of people didn't have or don't have easy access to now, that would be great to be able to play again. Imagine this. Oof, this is a good one. Nintendo using or making their own 2D HD Square Enix Octopath Traveler engine as a remake of A Link to the Past. I think that would be mind-blowing. Some people say, don't mess with it. It's a perfect game and stuff like that. But you know what? The same people, myself included, want to see Final Fantasy VI and Chrono Trigger made with that HD 2D engine from Octopath Traveler. Uh, we're getting Dragon Quest III in it. We're getting you know, Project Triangle strategy in it. 
So I could totally go for a link to the past in that engine. It'd be magnificent. Speaking of Square Enix, another crossover game that I would love to see is a brand new Super Mario RPG. We get Paper Mario games. You know, the Mario RPG series has continued with Mario and Luigi, Superstar Saga, you know, different Mario RPG titles over the years. But a Mario RPG done today could be like Nintendo's own Kingdom Hearts 3. And that's another franchise that I'm like, let's get the Kingdom Hearts games. Let's get all of them, boom, on Nintendo Switch all the way up to 3, you know? That would be nice. But back to a crossover title. You know, I said I'd like to see Ubisoft make a Star Fox. I'd like to see Square Enix make a Super Mario RPG 2. <laughs> a remake of the old one in modern visuals would be pretty sweet. But uh, a brand new title would be awesome. For that matter, some type of Nintendo RPG. It doesn't have to be as many characters deep as Super Smash Brothers, but I love Subspace Emissary. And I want to see a story-driven game with a bunch of Nintendo characters in it, you know? The, the NGU, the Nintendo game universe. Similar to how MCU dominates the movie industry with all of its Marvel characters crossing over. I want to see a, a game like that, but with Nintendo. Story-driven, play as several different characters, RPG. It doesn't have to be turn-based strategy. It could be action RPG-oriented, but you know, get some voice actors and have a blast and make it a big, ambitious title. That's a crossover I'd like to see. Any other games? Any other shocking announcements? Um, this one is an interesting one, and that is regarding the last couple of characters in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. I think one of the biggest shocks would be if we got Master Chief. But is Master Chief eligible because he's never been a Nintendo on a Nintendo game, in a Nintendo game, unless you count Fortnite. If you count Fortnite, Fortnite on Nintendo Switch, you could play, you could download, you could buy and run around as Master Chief, Kratos, and Alloy. So could you possibly see Kratos as a character? Could you possibly see Master Chief as a character? I guess that technically makes them eligible, right? Yeah, they're kind of a, a skin, but you know, Nintendo's rule, Masaharu, Masahiro Sakurai's rule, is that it has to be a video game character in origin and has to have appeared on a Nintendo console. If that's not good enough, being just a skin in Master Chief, in that case, could a major announcement, a major shock reveal be Halo Master Chief Collection coming to Nintendo Switch. <laughs> Simultaneously, we're also getting Master Chief and Smash. Or xCloud coming to Nintendo Switch. Possibility, right? Game Pass. Game Pass. Now on Nintendo Switch. Wow. Maybe a Nintendo Switch Plus exclusive feature? Although Nintendo Switch could handle um, quite a bit of the Game Pass library, especially if it's xCloud enabled and such. Hmm. So yeah, Master Chief would be big. Kratos would be big. Kratos would be more unexpected. I think Tomb Raider would be cool. Lara Croft, another female. Another uh, Western developed character. I would personally really like to see Scorpion from Mortal Kombat. You'd have Ryu from Street Fighter, and Terry Bogard from Art of Fighting, and Scorpion from Mortal Kombat, and you've got Heihachi skin for the Mii from Tekken, and of course Ken from Street Fighter, and Mario and Sonic in the same game. Like, this is amazing. And Cloud, I mean, like Smash Brothers has become something ridiculously special, just unheard of in the industry unfathomable back of the day, right? So Nintendo could nail anything. Of course, you know, Kratos would be 
I don't see a God of War coming to Nintendo Switch, so you'd have to say, well, he's eligible from Fortnite perspective, unless that they somehow made him in Nintendo Switch porting some God of War game, but that just doesn't seem likely. What about Ratchet and Clank, though? Ratchet and Clank, that duo fits Smash Brothers better than Kratos, but once again, that's a character that has never been on Nintendo Switch. Not a Fortnite character, not, nothing. So you'd have to have some type of Ratchet and Clank port of some game coming to Nintendo Switch uh, that could help boost up sales of Ratchet and Clank on PS5. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe that's not a good idea. You know, if you want to play more of Ratchet and Clank, which you got to experience the first game in the series on Nintendo Switch, make sure you play the brand new, you know, most modern Ratchet and Clank on PS5. And by the way, Ratchet and Clank is now in Smash Brothers. Would it benefit Nintendo much? Maybe. Would it benefit Sony much? Depending on the Ratchet and Clank game, uh, probably. Uh, you know, like I said, Doom Slayer and or Scorpion from Mortal Kombat. If I had to pick probably a combination of most likely and personal favorite that I want to see as the last two, I'd say Crash Bandicoot and Scorpion. Both characters from the West. Crash, to have him, Mario, Donkey Kong, Pac-Man, Sonic, really Mario, Sonic, and Crash. Three characters that had really big rivalries in the early to mid-90s in one game would be amazing. And Crash is very likely, I think, for the game as one of the final two. I know a lot of people want Sora. Sora from Kingdom Hearts would be cool. Gino from Super Mario RPG. Wario. Well, not Wario, I should say. Waluigi. Cool. Um, Doom Slayer, probably not as likely, especially nowadays with the Microsoft acquisition of Bethesda. But then again, Microsoft and Nintendo have a pretty good relationship. So, possible. But I would say Scorpion over Doom Slayer, over Doom Guy. And I would say Crash over um, Ratchet and Clank, you know. Could we get more DLC to follow after these final two? Maybe another wave? Will Masahiro Sakurai do it? I don't know. Could he give us a surprise title? Like, yeah, I've been working with a small team here and there on a brand new Kid Icarus game. New Uprising port. Probably not. Could someone at Nintendo be doing that? Have been doing that for the last couple of years? That's another franchise that I'd like to see come back. Even if they brought the 3DS version, reworked the controls, dual analog, and released it in HD on Nintendo Switch. That would be a fantastic game that so many people would be playing for the first time. I would like a new entry, but I would love to revisit that one on the big screen, you know? Oh, you see how exciting this is? You see how many franchises Nintendo truly has to work with? I mean, they could show off new Legend of Zelda crossover content in Animal Crossing, and that seems likely. They're going to focus on games, though, so I don't think we'll see too many crossover stuff like, oh, here's Nintendo and Nike teaming up with a Zelda-Nike crossover shoes or, you know, Zelda Reebok, Zelda Adidas, Zelda Vans, you know, probably not that kind of stuff. They probably wouldn't use this place to show off the new Super Mario footage, which would be the first footage shown off of the new Super Mario movie in development that's coming out, you know, within a couple of years by Nintendo and Illumination Studios. I think it's terrific that Shigeru Miyamoto is involved with it, but man, I really want to see footage of it, you know? Especially nowadays with kids and just how easy it is for them to re-watch animated films of the CGI nature in particular. I would, I would love to be re-watching Mario over and over again in the house, probably. As long as, well, even if not, but please have Charles Martinet, my good friend of 20 years, be involved in the project. Martinet for Mario. 
we got to have Charles on board reprising his role as Mario and Luigi in it, you know? Nobody else, right? If it doesn't happen, though, um, I still watch the movie, and I'm sure I'd still love it, but I really want Charles Martinet. Personally, he's a great person, been a longtime friend and supporter. Um, can't say enough positive things about him, but also from a fan's point of view, Charles Martinet is Mario's voice, so let, let's get that happening. But let, that's not going to be shown off, you know? Hmm. Nintendogs, though, that's another one that could be shown off, I guess. Why not? Pikmin 4, you know, the port of Pikmin 3, Pikmin 3 Deluxe on Nintendo Switch was the best-selling game in the series, and that's just a port. Pikmin 4 has been rumored, suggested for years to be close to complete in development. Could we finally see Pikmin 4? You could see that definitely not all of these games are going to be shown off. Because I've been talking for 55 minutes. Probably 50 plus designated on this topic. Now some games I kind of broke into a little bit more and deep dove more than Nintendo would in their Nintendo Direct, but yeah, you could see that not everything is going to be shown off. Some other third-party projects, the rumored Resident Evil game coming exclusively to Nintendo Switch in 2022, could that show up? Could we see some blockbuster announcement like a Street Fighter VI coming to Nintendo Switch, timed exclusive or exclusive? Wow, would that be amazing. Street Fighter is a really important property for me. One of my favorite franchises in all of gaming. One of my top three, in fact. I want Street Fighter to be enjoyed on all consoles, personally. But if somebody gets Street Fighter exclusively, that's a big win in my book. As you saw happen in Street Fighter V. Rare Replay coming to Nintendo Switch? I could see that as a possibility. Ah. <sighs> Hmm. I'm going to throw a crazy one out there. What if? Oh, what if? <laughs> you might laugh at this one. You might laugh at this one. What if Microsoft and Rare and Nintendo had a talk and were like, you know what, Nintendo? How would you feel about you making a brand new Banjo-Kazooie for Nintendo Switch and Xbox Series X. What? Crazy, right? But hear me out. Nintendo gets to benefit. Microsoft gets to benefit. Rare gets to benefit. Microsoft would act as publisher. They would fully fund the project. Nintendo X as developer. They fully create the project. Rare oversees certain things, making sure that the characters that they created are handled well. Rare's old IP gets seen by so many new millions of people. Microsoft gets the benefit from a portion of the sales and profit, regardless of whether this new Banjo-Kazooie gets sold, gets purchased by people on Nintendo Switch or Xbox Series X. Nintendo gets the benefit from sales on both Xbox Series X and Nintendo Switch of this Banjo 3E, this Banjo Kazooie 3 game. And we probably have the best 3D platformer developer in the business working on a brand new Banjo Kazooie game. Isn't that freaking cool? I mean, talk about probably quite unlikely, but wouldn't it be nuts? Wouldn't it be the most wild thing to come out of E3 if that's what happened? Oh, that gets me excited. <laughs> okay, that would be the craziest thing of the show. Not the Super Mario RPG 2 or the Nintendo RPG by Square Enix, although that one would probably be my most wanted game. Hmm. Not the Ubisoft Star Fox one. A couple of those are like kind of tied for most wanted, but I'd probably go towards the, the Square Enix Nintendo RPG one. But the craziest game, just the craziest game, would be this Banjo-Kazooie idea of mine and 
seeing Nintendo and Microsoft talk and share space together. You know, you've got Doug Bowser here and uh, here Larry Herb come on stage and you know, however they would do it, this this would be pretty crazy. <clears throat> Trying to think if there's anything else left to talk about. Whew, that was a good hour-long discussion of E3 2021. My hypes, my hopes, my hope hype, yeah. You know, I'm registered to go. This will be my 21st time attending E3, even though I'll be attending digitally like all of you. But I'm registered. I'm stoked. Um, Nintendo Switch Plus talk, though. Will we get it within the next two days? Fingers crossed. Will we get it at Summer Games Fest or some other time next week? Or is it really just going to skip this whole next two weeks and not be seen again until when Nintendo is ready in August to say that, hey, coming next month, we got a treat for you. Enjoy the trailer. And boom, it's Nintendo Switch Plus. Nintendo Switch Pro. Super Nintendo Switch. Nintendo Super Switch. Nintendo Switch Super. Nintendo Switch 4K, Nintendo Switch Advance. Lots of different possibilities. I'm hearing that this system, regardless of the name, is real. So many people are saying it's real. But Nintendo could just wait until they're ready in August to announce that it's coming September in North America. And if the other rumors suggest that it could be coming out later in Europe, okay. We got a Japan, USA co-release, and you know Australia, Europe getting it afterwards. Possibly, maybe it's October, November split. Hard to say. You know, Nintendo anticipates 25 million or more consoles sold in this upcoming fiscal year. I think if they could manufacture them, they might pass 30. Could they get up to 32? If they could make enough, I think I have I have a feeling that their library is going to be quite legit for the rest of this year and early 2022. Um, I think we have yet to experience Nintendo's best-selling year. 2021 very well might be it. 2022 could be too possibly. I also got to applaud Nintendo that if this Nintendo Switch Plus is indeed real. And it is indeed coming out, let's say, sometime between September and March next year. They're releasing it at the perfect time. We was absolutely on fire in 2006, 7, 8, 9, 10, starting to lose a little steam. If the Wii U came out and it was just a console for 300 bucks that played Wii games, no gamepad, just on the TV, but the Wii U came out November 2010 it would have had a full three years of being the most powerful platform on the market by a long shot over the competition before the new competition came. And you would have kept the hype train going from Wii into its next system. Instead of Wii dragging out for six years, Wii U coming out with the gamepad, being cool but being confusing to a lot and to others, eh, I could wait a year to more powerful systems come out. Of course, we got Nintendo Switch, but now, once again, Nintendo Switch, hotter than Wii was. For its 17 quarters on the market, it's actually selling better than Wii. Technically, Wii has like 50,000 more for the first 17 months, but we also had uh, a few more weeks, you know. It had like six and a half weeks versus just under four. So I give it to Nintendo Switch, but Nintendo Switch unlike we doesn't have any signs of showing down so before it has a chance to go down while these other companies Microsoft and Sony are having difficulties with their shipments production BAM release the Nintendo Switch Plus while it's hot while the company's brand is hot release IP from your stable of classic games because right now Everything is selling really well on Nintendo Switch. Soon to be best-selling Mario Kart game on a single platform ever. 
best-selling Animal Crossing, best-selling 3D Mario, best-selling Super Smash Brothers, best-selling Zelda game, like Zelda game by a lot, by more than double, you know? Best-selling Fire Emblem. Now's the time to make people know, hey, Nintendo, when I think Nintendo, is not just about Mario and Zelda and Splatoon, best-selling Splatoon, although that's only two entries deep, but like, wow, they've got F-Zero, Oh, they've got Diddy Kong Racing. Oh, yeah, Fire Emblem. Okay, yeah, that one's starting to get more relevant in my head. Nintendogs. Oh, I remember playing that. You know, F-Zero. Oh, wow, Star Fox. I remember that. Oh, this Star Fox is impressive. Punch-Out. Oh, yeah. Oh, this Wave Race 1080 Excite Bike. Yeah, yeah, those are good. Kirby, Donkey Kong. Like, release all of your power franchises. And even the ones that have been dormant because they're not the biggest. Release the Kid Icarus, you know. Make... Make everything new again. Have Ice Climbers come back in some smaller title, you know? And make everything shine on Nintendo Switch. I expect Pokemon to be there. I wouldn't be surprised if Pokemon has a small presentation of sorts before E3 so that Pokemon itself doesn't take up too much of Nintendo's um, Direct. But Pokemon Arceus... We have the release date for it. That's coming out January next year. Pokemon Diamond and Pearl remakes coming out this November. I expect to see them. I also believe that they will look both, respectively, significantly better than they did before. Both with, you know, around a year's worth of more development time from when the original trailer dropped. you got to say, well, that's footage from a few months old. So by the time both games release, you're looking at close to a year plus or minus for you know all three titles some other pokemon surprise maybe but those three titles or two depending on how you look at it should be there yeah i am pumped i am pumped i will provide you with an update if nintendo drops a sudden nintendo switch plus nintendo switch pro whatever announcement um between now and e3 I will be covering E3, I will be covering this Nintendo Direct, and yeah, thanks for watching this. This has been really fun getting out there all of my hopes, dreams, thoughts, expectancies, new Nintendo Switch Joy-Con, new Nintendo Switch Pro Controllers, could it just be called new Nintendo Switch? That's another name possibility. All right, this has been a blast. Thanks again for watching. I hope you were entertained. Let me know in the comments below what you think. And I'll see you all later. Take it easy. Have a good one. Bye.